So I bug light in here, metal hand of God. I just wanted to, you know, uh, have a little talk about something fucked up that I just saw. I felt the need to talk about it. It's midnight, like 12.30 a.m. Mother's Day. And, you know, I mean, I went out tonight for a little bit. Came home, ended up watching Netflix, and run across this movie called The Kissing Booth. And I just felt the need to talk about it. And you might be saying to yourself, Buck Lightning, you 38 years old. Fuck you doing at 1230 in the morning on Mother's Day watching a movie called The Kissing Booth. Fuck you. I don't need to prove myself to you. I got pussy last night. Shout out to my brother, Matt, who also got pussy last night. It was, I was very impressed. It's neither here nor there but she was impressive. So good for you, Matt. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, kiss and booze. So, uh, this is gonna be a not safe work subject matter. It shouldn't be. It's, it's a movie called The Kiss and Booth on Netflix. Feels like it should be a family friendly affair, but it's not. I definitely saw some statutory rape that absolutely happened in this movie. I don't know what the fuck I just watched. Let me tell you about it. Let me tell you about the Kissing Booth. Okay, so first of all, Kissing Booth stars a young girl who looks kind of like a chubby Rory Gilmore. You might be saying to yourself, Buck Lightning, 30 years, 38 years old. How the fuck you know who Rory Gilmore is? Fuck you. Like I said, I got pussy last night. I don't need to prove myself to you, but, you know, I did, in fact, watch all four episodes of the Gilmore Girls reunion when it came on Netflix. I'm not necessarily proud of that, but I did. Anyway, so like a chubby Rory Gilmore, it's not a bad thing, actually. She's just, um, it's kind of baby fat on her, which is sort of the point. Uh, so, uh, that's where the, again, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Hold, hold on. I'll feed you. Like, I, I get to the part where we talk about the statutory rape, but it definitely happened in this movie. We definitely saw some statutory rape. Anyway, so the movie, when you watch the trailer, seems to be about two best friends who grow up together. One's a boy and one's a girl. And they have to put on, so it's like, a show for the high school fair. And they decide to put on a kissing booth. And she has a crush on the boy's older brother. And, you know, you see the movie and you're like, oh, that looks cute. Looks like a family-friendly affair where, you know, she has a crush on the older brother, but the older brother's kind of a jerk. And it turns out that she's at, they're both in love with each other, they're best friends. And so the older brother, she just stops trying to date the older brother because she falls in love with her best friend. And, you know, and they find out at a kissing booth where... You know, there's like a switcheroo, and the younger brother, who's her best friend, ends up kissing. None of that happens. None of that happens in the movie. In point of fact, there's barely a kissing booth in the movie at all. I don't know why it's called a kiss. I mean, there's, there is a kissing booth early in the movie. They talk about it a lot for the first, like, ten minutes, and the kissing booth happens, and the kissing booth goes away. There's also a little thing where, you know, the two best friends have rules. And rule number nine is that you can't date relatives because he don't want her to date his older brother. Because his older brother's like real good looking and, you know, uh, strong and all things. I mean, he's a good looking kid too because it's one of those movies where they pretend like a, like a good looking kid's ugly. But, uh, so, you know, like you, you know, rule number nine, you can't date relatives and you're like, oh, he's, the reason he has that rule is because he's secretly in love with his best friend and he doesn't want her to get with his older brother because he's in love with her. No, that's not the reason. It turns out he's just an asshole. That's the only reason for the rule is he's an asshole. And it's kind of sad. Sort of bummed me out in the movie. That bummed me out in a movie that involves statutory rape. I should tell you something. It was a fuck, weird fucking movie. Kiss and Booth. Anyway. So, a lot of things happen that you think, oh, this is where the movie's going to go, and the movie don't go there. So, it turns out 
if the two best friends are not in love at all, like they love each other, but they're not in love at all, and she really is in love with the older brother, and uh, so first of all, the older brother, good looking kid, you know, I'm a little envious. I wish I looked like that. However, you know, she's 16. And you can tell she's 16. Actually, she might be younger than that. She looks kind of younger. Also, motherfucker looks 30. He looks almost my age. And so every time, like, they start making, and they make out a lot in this movie. Every time they make out, you're like, that's not, that's not supposed to happen. This is a Netflix movie. It's supposed to be a family-friendly affair about a kissing booth. This is not supposed to be, you know, creepy older neighbor, fuck 16-year-old girl. But that's that's what, I mean, eventually that's what happens. She, he, he fucks her. Like, I get to that. I get to that. First of all, before he fucks her, like, before he even kisses her, there's a scene where she gets drunk and he's like, he's res he keeps rescuing her. Like, in a really scary manner. Like, every, every time there's, like... There's this weird undertone where you're like, is this movie about how this kid's on steroids and he has rage issues and he's abusive and maybe he's beating his mama, Raleigh, with Molly Ringwald, as well? Molly Ringwald's in this movie. I don't know why. She shows up, like, in three scenes. Nobody else is famous in this movie. It's just like, oh, look, there's Molly Ringwald. Okay, cool. I like Molly Ringwald. Anyway, so there's this weird undertone where he seems to have like severe rage issues. Like he he beats up a lot of people in this movie. Like he fucking straight up hawks out and tackles a dude at one point, and then chases after the girl who name who she, her name is L, and he chases after. Her. And she's like, no, like, you're scaring me. And so he, like, pounds, he punches a car. And the car's like, ow, what the fuck did I do? All right, car didn't really say that, but I felt it. Anyway, she says, uh, you know, like, L, get back here. In a really menacing manner that I'm not conveying. Because I don't speak to women in that manner, generally. Well, that I know, I don't know, maybe I have, I don't know, but... He, he he yells at her, and you're like, he's going to beat the fuck out of her. This this is not a family-friendly affair on Netflix about a kissing booth. This is about a 30-year-old man who beats the shit out of a 16-year-old girl and then fucks her. That's, I think that's what this is about. This is, I thought this was about a kissing booth. No, it's not. But he doesn't beat her. He just kind of implies that he might... You know, and you buy it. Like, I don't know what that actor's into. But he's a really, really good actor. Or he beats up 16-year-old girls and then fucks them. I don't know. It was one of the two. Anyway, uh, so, I don't know where I was going with any of that. But, yeah, so, yeah. So, at some point, before they even make out, she gets really drunk. And he rescues her. And brings her to her bed, his bed. Not her bed, his bed. And she wakes up in his clothes. And uh, he comes in wearing literally only a towel around his waist. And you, she's like shocked. She's like, oh my God, we had sex. And he's like, no, I slept, I slept on the guest bed. Which begs the question, why didn't she sleep on the guest bed? Like he carried her in. Could have put her in the guest bed. Like you put her in his bed. And then showed up in a towel like, oh yeah, I just fucked you. And I suspect that's what actually happened. I think he might have actually raped her. And you're not supposed to get that. But that's kind of the impression that it leaves. Because why, if you, if I'm 30 years old and there's a 16 year old girl in my bed. Because um, I'm rescuing her. Rescuing. I'm not going to show up wearing nothing but a towel. Especially not looking like that 30 year old man does. Because he looks very good naked. I'm not, I mean, man, I got pussy. I don't need to fucking, I don't need to impress you. Anyway, so 
he uh, shows up wearing a towel and she's like, oh my God, oh, I'm so flustered. No, oh, oh, you've seen me in my underwear. Yeah, because you took off all your clothes. Everybody saw you in your underwear. And now she's all embarrassed and shit. She's like, oh, I need shorts. And he's like, I'm not giving you shorts because I want to see your pussy. As, as he does, again, he doesn't say that. And I suspect he already saw it at that point a few times that night while she was sleeping. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's what happened. This was fucked up. Anyway, uh, so somehow or another, they get wrapped to, up together in his curtain, like on accident. And she's like, oh my God, I just touched it. Like, it was supposed to be an accident. Let me tell you something, folks. I'm 38 years old. The only person who's ever accidentally touched my penis is me. It's like, things happen. Sometimes you sleep and you're like, oh, why, why is that there? I don't know. I just, uh, anyway, she didn't touch the penis. On it. She touched it because she wanted to touch it. Again, this is a story about statutory rape and possibly abuse. I'm not really sure. So, so they, they, uh, end up at the kissing booth and they make out in front of everybody and she's like oh my god I can't tell your brother like nobody can know that we're in love and he's like but I want to tell everybody and she's like no you're a player I can't date you but I kind of want to date you but I can't and then uh like a week after they make out for the first time and she's never they make a big deal about how she's never kissed anybody before this is her first kiss was this 30 year old man and uh a week after she fucks him underneath the hollywood hills sign you know the big the hollywood sign like it's all, all, all this takes place in los angeles near santa monica um and and she like straight up like he just has like i i don't think he had a condom I don't think he had anything. I think he just like took it down there. He rides a motorcycle, of course. Um, he takes her down there. And she said, by the way, this 16 year old girl is wet a lot. Like, I don't mean her pussy. I mean, she's like physically wet. And, um, uh, you know, uh, they do a lot to sexualize her. And they talk about sexualizing her a lot. It's what I, I need to get back to the fucking part, but I just gotta, I forgot to talk about this. Like, it's weird. Like, like, the big, one of the opening scenes is like, oh, she split her pants and all she has is a super short skirt that she stopped wearing like three years ago and it don't quite cover up her ass. And they're like, oh man, when did you get boobs? But she don't have titties. Like, it's weird. Like, they make a big deal. Like, she keeps taking off her top. It's like, you don't have no titties. Like, you got, you know, like, you might have B cups there. Like, good for you. Like, that's, that's respectable. I'm not saying A cup girls don't, it's not respectable. I'm just saying that's not, they're not big titties. They're not, B cups aren't big titties either. And they keep talking about it, but she's got, like, a big old ass. And I'm, I mean, it's an, I, but a 16 year old girl. I'm not saying I, it's, I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't mean, I mean, I look, but I don't like it. But, they really sexualize it and like she's walking around her ass is cut like the shuts above the fucking skirts above her ass and you can see her ass and you can see her underwear and you're like oh all right okay anyway they do a lot to sexualize this young girl you know and anyway so like a week after her first kiss she fucks the dude and yeah she's known him her whole life but like, literally, like, outside underneath the Hollywood Hills, I mean, like, in public, all, all he had down was a blanket. Again, I don't think he used the condom, but I don't think he used the condom when he raped her at the party that I mentioned earlier when she was drunk. Uh, and then, like, you know, there's this whole thing where they're in secret, but they're in love, and they're hiding, and you're like, oh, this is once again a family-friendly affair if you forget the fact that he's a 30-year-old man and that's a big ass motorcycle that they're on. And, uh, you know, and they fucking, and they allude to him fucking a lot. Like, they don't show anything. But they clearly, like, there's a lot of scenes where they're like, oh, oh my God. There was one scene where he's like, let's do it right here. And they're in the chemistry lab. So they get on top of the chemistry lab table and they fuck on the table. They fuck on the table. I'm not kidding you. They fuck on the table. And then the camera pans up and there's a security camera there. And you're like, wait, what? 
Like, does this movie... Is, is there going to be a part in this movie where a principal calls them down and is like, hey, we got a video. You, you're a 30-year-old man and you fucked him on the table of our chemistry lab and you're going to prison for life. Also, you have anger issues. Uh, is that scene going to happen? No. A couple of, like, because it's a montage. So, like, a couple of shots later, she notices that there's security. Like, she's been going to that school for, like, three years now. And he's been going for, I mean, I assume five or 30, I don't know, he's 30 years old, anyway, also, he goes to Harvard at some point, and he seems stupid, but somehow, like, he gets fucking full ride to Harvard, I don't really understand this movie, anyway, but they've been going there for a long time, and they never noticed there's a camera, like, this is an expensive school, there's probably a lot of cameras, so anyway, so she goes, and she steals, like, she, <laughs> I don't know, I don't understand this movie at all, so she sees the camera and she's like, oh man, I gotta go into the principal's office. So she causes a smoke bomb to go off in the chemistry lab as a distraction so she can send to the office and steal the security footage. And nothing ever happens with that. She just steals it and it's like, oh. And like really obnoxiously where the principal's like, what the fuck are you doing? But somehow he doesn't notice like a big ass DVD case. I don't know. Anyway. And why, why was the security footage just sitting there, like in the open, where anybody could steal it? I don't know. Anyway, so then finally, you know, the whole time it's like, oh, you know, your brother can't find out. Your brother can't find out. Your brother can't find out. And then finally the brother walks in and, like, she, like, she, like he... So what happens is, is like he's in the motorcycle. He's got a big Honda uh, Shadow. I think it's like a 750. Uh, it's a pretty heavy bike, and you're supposed to be impressed because he's working on it. But he was like unscrewing a bolt that I, I think goes to like I don't know what it goes to, but I was like, no. What are you taking that off for? Like, there's no reason for you to take that off. What are you supposed to be fixing? That bolt just goes to the engine. You, like, is it busted? Like, what? Anyway, so he asks her for a wrench, and she goes, and the wrench is, like, on the highest shelf for some reason. Who keeps your wrenches there? Like, if you work on stuff, your wrenches are, like, where you can reach them. Also, like, he had a ratchet in his hand. Like, a wrench, like, that, bo anyway... I'm getting a little into the weeds here, but that didn't make any sense. But he's like, oh, I need a wrench. So she gets up on a stepladder to get his wrench because it's fucking up in the rafters and shit. And she falls off the, because I guess she's stupid. She falls a lot in this movie, I think. Wait, maybe maybe it's also a movie about a 16-year-old girl who has alcohol problems because that seemed to be a theme in here as well. And anyway, so... He, you know, she falls down and she cuts her face. She, you know, I don't know how what she cut her face on, but okay. And so he's cleaning her off, and it looks like she just got beat up. And the brother walks, and he's like, "What the fuck just happened?" He's like, "Don't," you know. She's like, "Nothing, nothing, nothing happened. I just fell." You know, it's just, <laughs> which is something people, women who get abused, say. They'll be like, "Yeah, you know, like I, I just walked into a door," and she didn't say that, but she's like, "I just fell," and he, he looks at his brother. This is his brother, and he's like, don't protect him. Did you lay your hands on her? Did you hit her? And he's like, he's like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. You, you hit my, you hit her? And his brother's like, you think I would hit her? And I was like, yeah, I do too. I don't, I mean, I watched the movie. I saw her fall. I still think you punched her in the face because you clearly have rage issues. And it ends up, like, she's screaming, like, no, 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 nothing happened, nothing happened. And, uh, so, you know, so the, the brother, so he walks away, and she's with, the dude's name is Noah, the 30-year-old the man. So the best friend walks away, I don't remember his name, I don't even know his name. Anyway, so the 30-year-old man and her are now talking off to the side uh, in another room. And she's like, I gotta tell him. I gotta tell your brother. I can't let him find out this way. And then they start making out. <laughs> like, for no, like, they start making out. And the brother just walks back in the room. He's like, what the fuck is going on? 
and she's, you know, he's like, I can't believe this. Even though, like, you got the impression he did believe it the whole time. That wasn't good acting. Anyway, so then he's like, you're a cheap slut. And you're like, what? Like, like is everybody abusive in this movie but Molly Ringwald? Is Molly Ringwald, is that part of the movie? Is in the background, was Molly Ringwald getting abused? I don't know. Don't abuse Molly Ringwald. We love Molly Ringwald. Anyway, fucking, so, so the brother storms off, and she breaks up with the 30-year-old man because she's like, this is your fault. And he's like, how? All I did was, like, commit statutory rape and possibly abuse you. You know? And he had a point. I'm not saying he's right for it, because again, he committed statutory rape and he possibly abused her and many other people, including possibly Molly Ringwald. I don't know, but, you know, and then there's like, you know, so he leaves, like he just fucking bolts. He gets on his motorcycle. This is, I mean, I guess he's a 30 year old man. He can go away, but, you know, I mean, I still don't understand why a 30 year old man was still in high school, but, you know, so he leaves and then... You know, like, she tries to get the the brother back to her, so they could be best friends again. And it does... Oh, and I'm, I left out the whole part about, like, the best friend at the kissing booth meets... He, he meets a girl. I don't know where the girl came from. I don't know if she was in the movie prior. I wasn't paying that much attention up until the statutory rape. And he, he meets a girl. And they fall in love. And you're like, oh, wait... Like, is she going to be a distraction? Are they going to, as, as I told you, they don't, the, the two best friends don't fall in love. So he, he meets a girl who he really likes. And his emotional arc seemed to have ended at that point. But it didn't because then you get into the whole thing with the brother and, the, you know, him thinking, you know, he's beating women and shit and fucking them and she's a whore. That really came out of man. I was like, that's your best friend. You just told her she's a slut? Like, what? That don't seem right I mean to be fair I mean I think she had like a little bit of titty showing you know they really sexualized this girl anyway so then she gets the best friend back after a lot of trying like my, Molly Ringwald has to give her a whole like you're best friends and sometimes they fight but he loved you so blah 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 and then so there's, it all leads up to the prom where she goes alone because they broke up and a 30-year-old man, like, they set up the kissing booth. 30-year-old man shows up, and he's like, Elle, I love you. I want to be with you. And she's like, no, this this is terrible. And you're like, whoa. That ended abruptly. And then it, there's, like, a... Then it's, they go to another scene where there's a birthday party. Like, the movie didn't end. I don't know how to end this video, because the movie didn't... Like, what... Like, why didn't it end the prom? Why did they have to go to, a, like, a second big climactic scene for the two of them to get together? Why didn't they just get together after the prom or like during the prom or something? I don't know. And I still don't know if he abused her. But, you know. And then the movie ends with her, like, taking him to the airport to uh, so he can fly off to Boston and go to Harvard. Which I still... I mean... He looked dumb. He didn't seem like a studious person, but somehow he got like a ride to Harvard. Anyway, so he leaves her his motorcycle. And so the movie ends with her riding off with the motorcycle. And first of all, that motorcycle is way too big for her. If she falls down, and let me tell you something, if you ride motorcycles, motorcycles fall down. I have a bike that size. That's heavy as fuck. If she ain't, there's no way Chubby Rory Gilmore can, can lift this up. Okay, but she drives off and she's like, you know what? It doesn't matter if we end up together. I just remember that it all started because of the kissing booth. I was like, the kissing booth? Fuck. The kissing booth's been in like five minutes of this movie. This movie's like two hours. Anyway, I'm disturbed. I don't, I don't know what to do. Don't let your kids see the kissing booth because like this, you know, and I feel like I need a counselor. I, I don't know how to end this video. So goodbye.